Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome to uh, welcome back to the channel. The daily just smashed the backpack in the R35. Man, I just love driving this thing. It's so cool. I just wish it wasn't so freaking loud, man. It is really loud. It's really cold outside, actually. Right now it's like 44 degrees here in Colorado, and today, which is Friday the 20th, we should have technically got. Denver was gonna get like 21 inches of snow, which is wild. Uh, where we're at, we were only supposed to get like an inch, inch and a half, but then it technically moved until Saturday. So I don't think we're getting any snow. Uh, maybe we'll get some snow tomorrow, but uh, you know, Colorado does some crazy stuff with the weather and that wouldn't be the craziest thing that's ever happened here. Um, but uh, yeah, head to the shop. We're gonna try to get the Jeep finished up today and then finish up the Jeep and then maybe start working on the Corvette. So I just got here a little bit ago. Sean's already gonna take this thing on its first drive. I'm gonna take it outside. I don't know Buddy. if the coolant's leaking or if it's from the resume. It might be leaking. Oh yeah, you're good. You're good. I'd probably, you got like another foot. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're good over here. Look at that, brand new unit. Ready to go. Dude, for ripper on the junkyard? Yeah. Not even a check engine light. Not even. How's it run? Oh, it runs great. It looks beautiful. It really does. So this is the coolant you're talking about? Yeah. We need to figure out like good a good way to like clean the floor. Good way to clean the floor. So the Jeep is pretty much ready to rip. And I kind of think it's just like leaking from like the overflow. Cause I filled it up and it was like, I, I filled it up and it was, I, I you gave it, it too much. Oh, no, I didn't give it too much, I just spilled some. Oh, you spilled it. Okay. Well, I mean, it sounds great. Listen to that. The junkyard did a good job of selling us a good engine. And we, you did a great job plowing it in there. Thank you. Yep. All right, now what, Corvette, we'll clean this up. Maybe we'll put the vet on the lift. I don't know if we need to do that. I just popped the hood a little little bit ago. Basically, we need to remove this cylinder head and send it back to Texas Speed. So, in order to do that, we uh, you know we have this exhaust stuff right here. We need to maybe pull that off. I don't know if we could just leave it like this and leave it on the ground. I'd rather not put it on the lift, but maybe that'll work. All right, guys. So, maiden voyage. This thing's been running outside for a little over an hour. We had an airbag light on because we had a sensor that was disconnected up front, but right now, essentially all it is, is uh, this. So we got this thing. It's interesting because it has a uh, heated seat, heated steering wheel. I took off that thing, I put on this thing, that thing was fell off. It's a really nice unit, but now the, the seat doesn't work. It was working and then I went all the way down, now it doesn't work. So I guess. Maiden voyage in this thing, and then we're gonna start to mess with the vet. Driving this thing around, honestly, it drives so nice. It drives like a brand new car. You know, I mean, I think we we're talking a lot of crap about this thing when we we're working on it, just cause like, first off, you can't believe that it really needed an engine replaced at 80,000 miles or whatever, but I guess this engine, the Pentastar 3.2, does have some inherent like rocker arm issues or rocker issues, and I guess there's a thing that you could kind of do to prevent it, but if you obviously just drive this thing like a normal car and you never like do, any of that preventative stuff because to you this is just a car which to most people that's all it is you know then i guess you could uh, you kind of make them have some issues but uh yeah i mean it's it's a really nice car the heated steering wheel the heated seats it's got dual climate control it actually has like a nine speed transmission so it's a nine speed zf and it has pretty good power driving it around it has this cool uh, infotainment system it has this thing right here in the center so it tells you all your your data average of 20 miles a gallon I mean, honestly, it's a nice car. Like I, you know, if I was like, a, you know, somebody who just wanted a car, this would be a great car. I see why people, because they kind of look okay from the outsides. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, feels really good. Feels really nice. Like it's got, it's honestly got good power. And then again, with a nine speed transmission, it's a ZF transmission. It, uh, you know, shifts good, drives nice. It's got a bunch of apps connect your phone to it all the bluetooth stuff so i think that's pretty much it i think we're just going to cruise this thing back to the shop we need to wash it and then get it uh, basically listed i need to go to the uh, 
get it registered, or not get it registered, but get like the title and everything in my name, so that way, you know, when we go to sell it, then the transfer is all good. But um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much going to be it for, I guess, the Jeep. I guess I'll keep you guys updated after I give it, get it washed, and then hopefully when I get it sold. No, so uh, both off and, like, just get it no, so the, it, the other head is fine. It's just this one. We put the shims on it. So a long time ago, now you can see that the Corvette is going up on the lift. Beautiful Ben Pack lift. This thing is just. I love this lift. It is. Yeah. Look at it. It's just so beefy. So so. Smooth. So the vet is going up now. Need to drop the exhaust or kind of move the. Did you do the exhaust flange bolts on the on the head? Yeah. Yeah. I need to do the flange, the downpipe. So maybe you might, we might just have to take off the whole exhaust to drop this whole piece down. I think we'll get to it. Because even taking that whole exhaust up, you can't work it up, work it up through there. Yeah. Well, it's kind of a pain. Show them your lift. What? Show them your lift. So points. right here, so since this is like the, the bigger lift, the arms aren't really that short. So you can see we have one puck positioned up here, and then we have one right here. No, we just so I just set the little lift arm right here, right on the frame. So it's good enough for me, right? Yeah, it does work. I, I can get this easily. You think you're gonna get it until you go to the other side, and it's then right there. There's a bowl right there. Bowl right there, mountain wrench, wobbly. Well, I mean, if if you're confident, then you just oh, need to it. go ahead. I'll definitely get it easier from the bottom. Than I Man, I I just miss this car. This is such a good car. Like seven liter. I mean, seven liters. That's that's pretty. That's, that's, that's a that's, that's a big engine. It's a 427 with heads, cam, some full three-inch Holly uh, Holly exhaust. We've got the transmission in the back. It's got that uh, center force twin disc clutch. This thing freaking rips. We upgraded the slave cylinder and all that stuff on the inside, so now it has a tilt and slave cylinder on the inside. Of this. So now it's almost a it's almost bulletproof. This thing's this thing's a mess, right? Well, and it revs to the moon too, and it just sounds so good. It's just such a good car. I'm just surprised that I haven't, like, it's been taking this long to fix. But at the same time, like, I know why. It's because we were like moving shops and we didn't know what we were gonna do. And and now we've just been doing it. Now, steadily. now we've been since we've been in the shop. And like now we're just doing some things. We did. We completed our first engine swap. Now we got this thing on the lift. We got some things to do. We're getting her done. Oh, did you get it all? Well, that's Did you get all of them? Almost. So now I think is that one right there. Yeah, that, I know. Is going to be the fun guy. But maybe you can just use the mountain wrench since yeah. you're a big fan of the mountain uh, wrench now. I'm gonna order some. Well, so they're t I call them mountain wrenches, but that's because I have a version of them that are mountain wrenches, but then I have the Tekton version well, the too. Well, the Tekton ones are nice because they're six point. Like you want six point wrenches for any exhaust. It's not any. It's almost anything. Six point. Yeah, coming from the guy who's been using the twelve point things for everything. No. Well, that's all we've had available, but. It, there's certain things that require a six point. You can just look at it and be like, oh yeah, I'm not going to put a 12 point socket on that because I'm just going to cobble it. So, and probably exhaust manifold bolts are one of them. Is that you? Pull off the cylinder head now. Everything's basically off it. Ready to rip, right? Yeah, hopefully you just lift right off and have no issues. I mean, I don't think it should. People do this. this is, people do this all the time. They do. You pull them off. Are they ready? ready? Can we hold that exhaust back? didn't know uh, previously we were kind of in a last minute rush to get this this car done for drift week two we were basically just super last minute putting the heads and cam on it and then right before we were getting ready to leave or like two days before we we're getting ready to leave we put this head on and this side just the the push rod length was just a smidge off to where it didn't have any compression as soon as you you loosened it sorry about that yeah you got me. head gasket cut him as soon as see, we put it in it didn't have compression we loosened the bolts 
and then it had compression. So what we did, as you can see, there's like a little shim right there slid it underneath these guys right here like the where the rocker sits just to space it up a little bit torqued everything back down and it was literally good for 6,000 miles uh, came back took it to the road course and I think over time what happened is it just got loose ended up pulling the threads out of the, uh, the head right here and then it just got to the point where it got too loose and then it busted off that stand right there so uh, basically gonna send back this cylinder head to Texas Speed. They're gonna reuse my valves and all the springs and all that other stuff, and then just put all of this stuff in a new casting, and we should be good to go. But um, yeah, these are the big dog heads. These are the PRC 285s, uh, because we were just gonna do the like the ported stock heads, and then they didn't have any in stock to do in the kind of the fast turnaround that I, I needed at the time, and I wanted to do the head fix before we went on drift week. And so anyhow, we did these ones, upgraded a little bit, got some big dog heads in it, and then now, you know, basically it was just kind of a little bit of an issue right there at the at the end, which, uh, you know, kind of happens sometimes. So we're going to send it back. Should get one back here soon from uh, Texas Speed, hopefully within the next week, if uh, everything will work out good. So. All right, guys. So pretty much wrapping up everything over here at the end of the day. Just so nice to finally see the shop, like, actually getting used, you know? Like, yeah. finally, I felt like we've been in here for so long. Like, haven't done anything. Like, you know, we're waiting on the floor and then waiting on the lifts and waiting on... You know, just basically waiting to get stuff set up, and then now we're finally still not set up, but at least we have the lift set up. Man, it just looks so crazy, like with how big that lift actually is. Yeah. It looks just wild. And the Corvette just looks beautiful on here. The lighting in here is good. The floor is good. Everything's pretty good. So I'd say the shop is coming together really good. Went ahead and uh, washed the little Jeep, took it out for test drive. I mean, literally just runs and drives perfect. Drives great, it's like, it feels like a brand new car. Went and took some pictures of it, got listed on the internet. The only thing that we need to do is recharge the AC. It's the R1234. Yeah, I told you, it's, it's the same connector. No, it's R1234. Instead of R134. Oh, it's 1234? It's R1234 is what, it, is what it said. So I don't know what that even is. So I'll probably just take it to a dealership or the like- The connectors are the same though, right? The no, and it wasn't even charged because they just recently put the condenser yeah, and I, stuff I, in either it. They didn't charge or it had a leak. So yeah, it either has a leak or whatever. So we need to figure that out. But essentially I just got it listed. You know, can't really sell it or do anything until after Monday anyhow. But I figure, you know, it's the weekend, get it listed and then hopefully, um, you know, hopefully at least have somebody who's interested in probably Whoever is wanting to buy it will probably end up having to go to the bank anyhow, which we'll probably have to just do on Monday or next week, which would end up working out because that's after all the paperwork and everything will be done. Corvette is all the way apart, finally. Meaning to do this, been needing to do this for like three months. The Corvette has just been down. And we'll send this cylinder head off. I didn't get a chance to get a hold of them today to uh, you know get like the return address and all that stuff figured out. So I'm not sure if the vet is gonna make it to the slush event, but uh, later this next week, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the S14 down here I have a set of headers that we're gonna put on it or fabricate to make work on it, hopefully. And then hopefully we'll get that thing running and ripping for the slush event, which is on May 28th um, at Pikes Peak International Raceway. Finally do some drifting again, which I'm pretty stoked about. Yeah, I think that's probably gonna be it for this video, guys. Really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next one.